Here we are, the Cardinals, like we talked yesterday with Cole Thompson, looking to possibly trade out to four. We'll talk about that, how that affects the top ten. And now we have our sights set. Are you a Bauer boy? Are you an O-line ogre? Are you a wacky whiteout type of guy? Are you team trade down? And there are some that are willing to trade up. My guest is the lead draft analyst for Pro Football Focus, Mr. Trevor Sikama. Let's roll. Jets, 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 on a Friday morning, here to talk some Jets draft, and we will bring on our guest. He is the lead draft analyst for Pro Football Focus, the head poncho, whatever you want to call him, Trevor freaking Sikama. Trevor, how are you doing this morning? Connor, I'm doing fantastic, Matt. Love the intro. The intro is, is golden. So if you were the one who put that all together, I mean, that is beautiful, my friend. It is so good to be with you. I'm excited to talk some Jets football with you. I, I mean, talking, talking draft. On a, on a Friday morning, I mean, can't can't really beat that with the the lead draft analyst for Pro Football Focus. So we're gonna we're gonna dive right into it. Obviously, talks now with the Cardinals. It was reported by Ian Rappaport that there's a chance they're looking to trade out a pick for it. How do you how do you think that really shakes up the top ten in a in a way? Because the Jets are sitting at ten, and let's say if there's a fourth quarterback sitting there, let's say JJ McCarthy falls to ten. I'd 100%. I think a team would want to come up, trade for him, and I'm all for trading back. So what's what are your thought what's your thought process on that? Yeah, it just feels like a quarterback all four quarterbacks really are going to go off the board before we get to the Jets at number 10. Maybe a couple of months ago it felt like okay, JJ McCarthy, he's been kind of the wild card in all this, right? Maybe mm-hmm. he'll fall to 10 somewhere around in that area. The Jets could have an opportunity to maybe trade back if they wanted to get that extra second round pick back, but I just don't see that happening now. Now it feels like you mentioned Rappaport's tweeting out that, oh, the Cardinals are open for business. I think they are. I think the Chargers are in the same spot. I mean, Joe Ortiz, their new general manager, you know, he is somebody who loves more picks. Like in his introductory press conference, he talked about loving to build through getting those comp picks, right? Somebody who could get those extra draft picks. And if he's sitting at number five and there's a team that's really willing to give them a lot of draft picks to move down, say if McCarthy's still on the board, I think that's pretty advantageous for them. So it doesn't feel like we're going to get one of the top four quarterbacks in range of being on the board when the Jets are there to potentially take advantage of trading back like that. If they want to do that, I think their best case scenario is probably hoping one of the wide receivers falls, right? Like one of, I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to fall that far, but like Malik Neighbors from LSU or Romo Dunze from Washington. If they're still on the board at 10, and if the Jets are comfortable with their receivers that they have, that could maybe garner a decent trade back somewhere for one of those teams wanting to move up for one of those guys. So I don't think it's going to be with quarterback, but there are still avenues for the Jets to potentially move back in this draft. Yeah, you know, I'm all for trading back. Someone I li- I really, really like is Troy uh, Fatanu, Fatanu, however you say his last name, out of yeah. Washington. I like him because he could play he could play guard and tackle. And you know, your your co-host for the for the uh, stock exchange podcast on PFF, Connor Rogers released a mock draft for NBC Sports, and he was all, all for if the Jets are all in on Fatanu, just take him at ten. If you really think he's going to be this offensive lineman of the future, just go ahead. Don't need to trade back. Just just take him at ten and. I, I really like him. I also really like the wide receivers. Right now, I'm not all for taking offensive linemen at 10. If we were to if we were to trade back, I would be willing to do offensive linemen. But the reason I like Bowers or a weapon, I know everyone's going to say another tight end, a tight end at 10. That's so risky. But I, I, I like that because this team's a win-now team. If you look at this team, we have Aaron Rodgers, and he said two more years, two-year window with the – with the two to three year window with the Jets. And we need a weapon that we can plug in with him and help him win football games. Yes, we have Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses and they're only on one year deals. We do need to keep building this offensive line. But you look at this team and this team's a win now team. We have a quarterback who's 40 years old, going to be 41 in December. This team, you need to get weapons. And you know, the Jets did a great job. They went out, they got Mike Williams. But right now, probably if we were to stay at 10, my number one, realistic kind of ish draft target would be Romo Dunze. I really like him. Six, four, big guy, Washington, big fan. And 
but now let's let's explore the possibility of trading up. I know it is from what I'm hearing, it's pretty slim that they they might trade up. But when Daniel Jeremiah said he chose chaos in that mock draft, he did choose chaos. He calls the games for the Chargers, and he had the Jets swap trading up with the Chargers to pick five and taking Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. What are your what are your thoughts on that? And do you really see that being realistic? So you're right. I mean, like if anybody knows the chargers in, in draft media, it's going to be Jeremiah. He's got really good connections to that organization. And even just entertaining the jets being the team that trades up with the chargers at number five, to me signals the fact that they're absolutely going to be open for business. So there's a world that exists where let's even say that quarterbacks go off the board in the first four picks in this draft, Like right? It's all quarterbacks. Let's say Arizona trades back with whoever Minnesota, I think is the favorite right now. And they draft a quarterback. Well, then, the Chargers still have plenty of ammunition to trade back because Harris Jr. would be on the board. Malik Neighbors would be on the board. Brock Bowers or Madunze, like you mentioned. So I think that there's certainly a world where you could not only have a trade at four, but also a trade at five. Just because there's a trade at four doesn't mean that somebody's not yeah. going to trade up to go get one of those wide receivers. So, look, Marvin Harrison Jr. would be great in New York, but it's sort of tough to think that they would be able to pull that trade off because – You'd have to trade 10, obviously. You're, it's a little pick swap. You'd have to probably trade three, your third round pick this year. And then you're also like going into next year, which they still have all of their picks for next year, but it's just such a tough ask. And it, 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 it you're giving up a, a, a lot to go get that guy. Yeah. Now, you said, I, I, am, I am with you, all right? I'm all yeah. for when you're in a winning window, like go all in, you know, don't get, too reckless with it like yes yes New Orleans Saints have been with their calf space over the last couple of years but (laughs) even then they've been able to field teams and kind of change the roster and things like that so like when you have an opportunity to go all in go all in like you don't there are not many organizations at all especially living in the Brady era for 20 years and now we're seemingly in the Mahomes era where it's like you have to face those two juggernauts at some point in the playoffs for the Super Bowl you truly have to have the best team possible. You don't want to leave any stone unturned. And so I think they could explore this possibility, but I think the likelihood of them trading up is small. I think it is more of kind of what you were saying. Odunze could be available for them at number 10 without Mm -hmm. having to move. Brock Bowers could be available for them at number 10 without them having to move. So if you want to go with an offensive playmaker, I think they're going to roll the dice and hope one of those guys lands with them. Instead of maybe looking to number five, like Jeremiah suggested, I think the Chargers are certainly open for business, but I just don't know if the Jets would be able to comfortably give up what is required to go up to get him at number five. I'm yeah, I, I agree. I'm all for I'm I'm for trading up if we're going to go and get Harrison, and I'm I'm for investing in this team right now as it's a win now team, but I'm not extreme to the point where I'm giving up literally just giving up our whole draft capital in the future to kind of go out and just get Marvin Harrison and do that. And I agree with what you were saying. And when the, when the Jets signed Tyron Smith before they signed Mike Williams, I said, you know, honestly, I would trade up one or two picks for Romo Dunze to go get him. That's how much I really liked him. Yeah. But now that, now that we've kind of solidified wide receiver two with Mike Williams, I, I, you know, I really like to stay at 10 or trade down. I'm not team trade up right now, just because unless we're, I the only way I do it is if we were to put together a reasonable package and go up and get Harrison, that was the, that would be the only, only way I'd trade down. But uh, Trevor, if you could give me five players, the top five of what of what guys you think would fit best in the green and white for 2024, who do you think are the top five best options for this New York Jets team? Ooh, okay. So I will keep it realistic at yes, number. Yes. I, I'll, I'll keep it realistic like at number 10. So I'm not going to put Har- Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors would be fantastic for this team. Um, so would Joe Alt, but I don't think those guys make it to 10. So I'll give you five names that aren't including those three players, but just so everybody out there is listening, I would absolutely think that they would be great fits in green and white for the Jets next season. So the first we mentioned, I'll throw out Romo Dunze. If they can get Romo mm-hmm. Dunze, I think that's fantastic. Like even with the Mike Williams signing, you go out and get this guy, right? You have this incredible trio of wide receivers then. Mike Williams obviously has the injury history himself, and so you're hoping that he's fully healthy this year, but it's only a one-year deal. If you got the chance to take Odunze at number 10, I think you do it. Brock Bowers, I think, is an option for this team. You, know, you can get into the debates of, hey, are you going to take a tight end at number 10? For the Jets, 
as long as you're okay with your offensive line, then I would certainly entertain this. I think that he would be a great weapon with Aaron Rodgers. He'd get a ton of targets right away immediately next year. And like you mentioned, there is a debate between what's the better pick overall between offensive line and offensive weapon, but there's no doubt about it that like picking Brock Bowers is not a net negative for this team. It would make the team better. It would give them a better passing attack with Rodgers there. The other guys that I'll bring to the table, though, are the offensive linemen. I, I agree with my co-host at the NFL Stock Exchange podcast where he says Troy Faltanu from Washington is their best pick. I think he is, and that's ultimately why I wouldn't be moving up if I'm the Jets because, yes, a Marvin Harrison Jr. would be great for your team, but you can get a really, really good offensive lineman at number 10 with it, the way that it seems like this draft is shaking out. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't just trade the farm like you were kind of talking about they might have to do. Like, I'm, Because they don't have a lot of picks in this year's draft, I'm wondering if to move from 10 to 5, are you going to have to give up two second-round picks, like second-round pick in 2025 yeah. and, and the second-round pick in 2026? Because Joe Ortiz for the Chargers would do that. But then it's like, man, now the Jets are in the same exact spot they're in this year for the next two years after that, not having that second-round pick. And that would... Kind of suck. So I don't think they're going to do that. So ultimately, I, I love Troy Faltanu. I feel as though he could start at guard, even over John Simpson, who they just signed, who I think could be a nice utility interior offensive lineman for them. Tyron Smith's at left. Morgan Moses is at right. If one of those two guys goes down, you can either move Faltanu to, to that offensive tackle spot, or you know that you can move Elijah Vera Tucker to that spot too. Like if it's the right side of the line scrimmage, you want to keep him over there, you can absolutely do that. Faltanu fits that role as well. I think Talisa Fuanga from Oregon State mm -hmm. also fits that role. I think he could play tackle in the NFL, and I think he'd be a really good tackle in the NFL. But for the Jets specifically, again, you could put him at left guard to start his career next year to get your best mm -hmm. five out there. And again, like if Tyron Smith happens to miss games, which Tyron Smith has not played a full season in since the NFL 20, mm -hmm. since 2015, right? I mean, like it's just been a long time since he's gotten to that point. So – you, you got to have a little bit of insurance there. I like Fautanu in that area as well. And then the other one that I will throw out is Olu Fashanu. And I have some concerns with Olu Fashanu when it comes to playing versus power and getting stronger, being able to anchor a little bit better. But the Jets situation might actually be perfect for him, right? Because you don't have to throw him out there right away. He gets to learn behind Tyron Smith, one of the best left tackles in the NFL over the last decade. He gets to then kind of like ease his way into the NFL. And like if Smith happens to go down, then Fatan or then uh, Fashanu can kind of come in in that regard. So the five players that I really like for the Jets the most realistically staying at 10 is Romo Dunze from Washington, uh, Brock Bowers from Georgia, uh, Troy Fatanu from Washington, the offensive lineman, um, the offensive lineman, Talise Fuanga from Oregon State, and then offensive tackle for, from Penn State, Penn, um, Olu Fashanu as well. So those are the five that I think of when I think of really great uh, additions for the Jets next year. I think I think all five of those are, are really solid guys. And then obviously Fashanu and Fuanga have been – swirling around the Jets, really pre-Mobile, before the Senior Bowl in Mobile, mm -hmm. just because the Jets, they we had a feeling that Joe Walt was probably going to go in the top before the Jets. I, I personally don't see him making him making it past the Titans. I I really don't. I just think he's too talented. I look at I look at Joe Walt and he kind of reminds me of Joe Thomas, the way he plays. But but let's stay stay with the topic the, with the Jets' current draft position. Let's say Joe Douglas is like okay. I'm going to I'm going to trade back. You obviously mentioned that it might not be a quarterback that teams are going to come up for. Mm -hmm. What teams could you see possibly wanting wanting to come up? Is it the Raiders? Is it the Vi is it the Vikings? Is it maybe the Broncos? What what teams do you think would be interested in coming up and s selecting at pick 10? Yeah, I think that the conversation obviously has to be prefaced with kind of who's still on the board. And that's kind of the 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 big kind of like cop out for answering a question like that, but it does give you some options, right? We went through offensive line probably being the richest area that the Jets might have at number 10. We we think that maybe Joe Alt will be off the board. We kind of figure that Joe Alt will be off the board, but I don't know if there's going to be another offensive lineman other than Joe Alt off the board. So if that's the case, then you've got a lot of guys to pick from. So you get a little bit further down the draft. You've got 
you know, New Orleans might really be in the market for an offensive tackle, depending on what they think of Trevor Penning at this point. You know, Ryan Ramchick as well, the their longtime great right tackle. He's contemplated retirement. So next year, shoot, New Orleans has to New Orleans has to be honest with where they are right now, right? And Ramchick is playing this season. Penning is supposed to be their left tackle, but if Penning doesn't improve and Ramchick retires a year from now, all of a sudden now you have a left and right tackle hole that you have to fill, and that's a really tough ask. So do they want to get aggressive and go get a guy of the future in that regard to kind of give them a little bit of insurance? The New Orleans at 14 is an option. I think Seattle is another team that, like, if if uh, Troy Faltanu specifically is on the board, he'd be perfect for them as an interior offensive lineman yes. with their with their offensive line investments of Charles Cross and um, Gabe Lucas that they had the year before. I think that getting that young offensive line in there is it would be really key for them. So I think the Seattle Seahawks at 16 are an option. And then I think the Cincinnati Bengals, they're not often a team that makes those big jumps, those big trades when it comes to the draft, but them sitting at number 18, maybe they think like, so if Aromo Dunze is there, right? Maybe they make it so, okay, we're going to trade up to 10. We're going to draft Romo Dunze. And then we're going to trade T Higgins to make up for some of that draft capital that they'll lose to go from 18 to 10. So that, that the Bengals are a big wild card for me because they have Higgins right now, but it's very clear that they could move him at any point. And you're likely, in my opinion, getting at least a second round pick back for T Higgins because you got to trade for him and then sign him. So I don't think you're going to get a first round pick, even though T Higgins is great. So if you've got to give the Jets this year's second round pick to move from eight to 18 to 10. Now I'm just kind of speculating here. I don't have the draft chart in front of me, the draft yes. value chart in front of me, but then you could kind of turn around and be like, all right, we got Romo Dunze and, and Jamar chase now. So let's trade T Higgins. They can go get an extra second round pick anyway. So now all of a sudden they have Romo Dunze. They'll have a second round pick somewhere with some, some team that wants to trade for Higgins. So to me, those are kind of the teams. I look at New Orleans at 14, Seattle at 16, and then the Bengals sitting there at 18 as these wild cards for the Jets to maybe be able to recoup that second round pick or just some additional draft capital one either way. Yeah, I agree. Now let's get into the um some questions in the chat. I, I agree though. We can't stop can't stop building this offensive line. I mean, obviously when the Jets signed Tyron Smith, you quote tweeted that and said I'd still take Fashanu at 10. So, you know, I, I agree. We can't stop building this offensive line, but uh, Tyron Smith, in my opinion, is the best tackle the Jets have had since DeBrickshaw Ferguson. So it's nice to have him and Moses. But, I mean, next year there's a chance we're running into the same problem. We, we, we can't forget these guys are on one-year deals. And Tyron Smith, like you mentioned, hasn't played a full season since 2015. But the contract that we got him on, I think he's very favorable. The, the $6.5 million guaranteed incentive-based yeah. deal, I really – really really like for this team but uh boy green is here in the chat connor has three awesome frame jets jerseys behind him trevor if you had three frame bucks jerseys behind you who would they be and why oh man um if i had three framed bucks jerseys Derek brooks has to be one of them uh Derek brooks is my favorite tampa bay buccaneer yes. of all time just a Hall of Fame legend, uh, one of the best linebackers to ever play the game, and somebody who always put on for Tampa as much as he possibly could. I think the other jersey would have to be um, Leroy Selman, uh, the o like the OG All Pro Buccaneer. You know, R.I.P. To, to Leroy Selman. But again, he is when people think of throwback, the original creamsicle Bucks. I feel like Leroy Selman has to be in there. And then, man, who would the third one be? There's so many. There are so many good choices. I feel like. Yeah. I think honestly. <laughs> Honestly, I think Mike Evans would be the third one because mm. Mike is somebody who has, a, once again, just been Tampa through and through, was drafted by the Bucks in 2014, um, has been with the team ever since. Uh, I think he's going to retire a Buccaneer. He's somebody who absolutely loves the city, does so much for the city, uh, obviously is a record breaker in the production that he has had over his 10-year career. And uh, he's the best receiver that the, the franchise has ever had. The best offensive weapon, let's just say it, that the Bucks have ever had in franchise history. So I think it would be Derek Brooks, it would be Leroy Selman, and then it would be Mike Evans. I like it. I really like a great question by Boy Green from one Tampa question to another for Tampa Bay Trey. Trevor, I'm curious what part of Tampa you're from. New Tampa, Carrollwood, Temple Terrace. I ask because I've lived in the I've lived the majority of my life here in Brandon, Florida. 
So I am not, not actually from Tampa. I'm actually from Bradenton, Florida, which is an hour south of where Tampa is. But, you know, the Tampa sports teams are obviously kind of how I got my identity on Twitter or reporting, talking about the Tampa sports teams. And I did live in Tampa for a few years. I kind of lived right in the uh, the Soho area, which was a great place. It was right in between St. Pete, right in between downtown. Could go to Lightning games, could go to Bucks games. That's where I was living when I was covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for my first full-time job when I was with PeterReport.com. So I'm actually from Bradenton, Florida, but I, uh, I say that I'm from Tampa just because, one, not a lot of people know Bradenton, and two, I'm always trying to represent and put on for the city. So that's where I'm from. But I certainly know all of those areas that you mentioned growing up in that area. So, And doesn't Tampa Bay Trey just sound like such a good nickname slash that's, Twitter uh, handle? You, you know, it, it does. <laughs> and I have worked at a handful of different places and they've kind of like wanted me to change the Twitter handle. It's like, no, I can't do it. It just rolls yeah. off the tongue. It's my, it's my alter ego at this point, logging on and becoming yeah. Tampa Bay Trey. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like it. And then Boy Green's asking another one. Trevor, you were an NFL network coverage for the NFL Combine this year. That was great. I really I really enjoyed the Combine. I mean, Jeremiah and Eisen on the call. And then obviously we saw you on the NFL network. Or as Boy Green said when you were on his show, we all saw, quote unquote, Goldilocks on the NFL <laughs> network. <laughs> Man. What else is a career bucket list? I've had some really cool ones, man. I obviously I, I am beyond blessed to work with so many great hardworking people who have been right there with me as I've as I've been able to have these really cool opportunities. You know, like I, I am not where I am in this business without so many great people who have who have really helped me get to this point. So whenever I go on those cool shows, the best part for me is always the fact that I feel like I'm doing it with other people. And, and so that's a, that's a really cool part to me. So, you know, some of the bucket list things, obviously doing the NFL network coverage at the combine, you know, getting to be in that stadium was really cool. Uh, I got to go on Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks podcast, move the sticks which yes. is really cool to me because I've been listening to that show for as long as I can remember, because I've loved the draft so much. So that was a really cool moment. Got to go on the Dan Patrick show for the first time last week as well, which was just again, so surreal. I, I remember working landscaping during the summers when I was in high school, listening to the Dan Patrick show. And then, uh, you know, this year to be on it was really, really cool. Um, I don't know. I really don't know exactly what my, what my next kind of like bucket list thing would be. There's just a lot of really cool uh, media opportunities, you know, doing more stuff for NFL network stuff for bigger networks, things like that. The partnerships that we have at PFF, um, it's been really cool. So the fact that I get to kind of have this this title and this role at PFF, and again, just the opportunities that we have, getting to go on a lot of different team sites too, right? I mean, there's a lot of digital teams that I get hooked up with uh, around the NFL, and so to get to connect with all these fan bases, man, it's a really cool opportunity to just get to talk about something that I love with the NFL draft. And so, honestly, uh, my job right now is just bucket list stuff all over the place because of uh, who I get to work with and things I get to do with them. Yeah, something, something I really like now, especially about the draft analysts, is there's so many like guys that are newer to actually becoming these draft analysts. Like you, you have the old characters, you have like the Todd McShays, you have the Mel Kuypers, those guys who have been around for a long time. But if you really think about it, you, Connor Rogers, Jordan Reed, you guys have really just bursted onto the scene as of late. Like you guys weren't around 20, 25 years ago. Like McShay and Kuiper and these guys. So that's something I really like. It's kind of we're kind of, kind of coming into a new generation of draft analysts. I appreciate I, it, man. Which I, I, and you're and, and you're and you're right there. You're the next wave, right? You're doing stuff like this, which is super <laughs> cool. You know, whether you want to get more into the draft, you want to focus on the Jets, whatever it is, man. You're that next wave too. So you should take pride in that, man. You're already way ahead of the curve, which is cool. Thank you. I um I re really appreciate it. One more question before before we wrap up, obviously we mentioned possibly trade down, trade up. How, what do you think would be the highest if the Jets said, okay, we're trading up and this, and you say this is the highest pick I think they'll trade up to, or they say we're going to trade down. What do you think is the lowest pick they'll trade down to and trade up to? Oh yeah, no, that's a great question. So Thank you. I, I think the highest is five. I don't think they're going to trade up to four because as long as McCarthy or Daniels or, or shoot, I guess Drake may from what we've heard recently, yeah. like as long as there is that fourth quarterback on the board, I think the price is always going to be much higher than the jets are going to be willing to pay. Right. If there's a quarterback on the board, 
the Jets aren't trading up for a quarterback, but let's say if the Jets talk to the Cardinals, they're going to be trading up for Marvin Harrison Jr. But if the Vikings are talking to the Cardinals, they're going to be trading up for one of the quarterbacks. So their price is always going to be way higher just because they're trying to trade up for a quarterback. They're going to be more desperate. So I can't see the Jets realistically trading to four. I think the talks of that start at five. If all four quarterbacks go off the board in the first four picks, you then have that fifth pick. It's the opportunity to maybe trade up for a wide receiver. Maybe you're in that conversation. So five, I do think is the highest that they would trade up. And then the lowest, man, what would be the lowest? I mean, I look at teams a little bit around the top 20, like the Rams who might be aggressive, you the Eagles at 22 that might yeah. be aggressive, mm-hmm. but I, I don't, you know, cause, cause the jets are sitting there at 10 and they would want an extra second round pick. Well, Philly's got two first, two second round picks. They pick 50 and they pick 53. So that could be an option for them. And that price could be worth it because they're jumping so high. But do the Jets want to get all the way down to 22? They could still get a pretty good offensive lineman at 22. So I guess that's probably my answer now that I'm talking about it out loud. I think Philadelphia would be the lowest the Jets would go. Even that, I think, is a stretch. Maybe more realistically, it would be Cincinnati at number 18. But I can see a world where Philly goes, hey, we'll give you one of these second-round picks yeah. to move up from 22 to 10, and maybe that's enough for Joe Douglas to say, all right, we can still get a good offensive lineman at 22 whenever it comes on the clock, and maybe they'll be happy with that. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm personally, I'm I'm all for trading trading down to around the the 20 the 22 kind of area but I don't want to trade down so much where we're kind of like in the in the area of like we're really late like the 30 kind of area I really really don't like that I'd rather stay later first round rather trading back all the way into like 28 32 kind of area or even early second round yeah man I just I don't I don't know I don't know how I don't know how far they want to get past 10 just because yeah. there's so many good players at 10 like you have Brock Bowers on the board you might have the wide receivers on the board but if, if it's only the offensive linemen I think they can ent- entertain a lot of other things because there's just so many offensive linemen that can go in the first round of this draft yeah I agree Trevor thank you for joining us any final thoughts uh no connor this is awesome it was great to link up with you i appreciate you having me on the show this is a lot of fun uh your background setup is making me jealous the questions of the three jerseys maybe i gotta upgrade my setup i gotta get it like you so man i appreciate it you're doing great you're killing it and so uh hope to talk to you soon Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Guys, if you are one of the 983 people watching on Twitter and you haven't subscribed, head over to NY Flight Jets Talk on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot. Guys, thank you guys for watching. And as always, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets.